These are HDMI cables, but I'm here to tell you that these cables are not the same. So for example, if you have older equipment, you might have HDMI 1.4. The newer thing was HDMI 2.0 that supports up to 60 Hertz, but then we have the newer and the greater cable called HDMI 2.1. On this video, we're gonna talk about ARC versus eARC and how these cables can really change your experience on your television. Plus, we'll do some bonus footage where I'm gonna show you how to hook it up and some of the different menus on TVs. I'm Tech Steve, sit back and relax, and let's get started. So what is ARC and what is eARC? Well, ARC stands for Audio Return Channels and eARC stands for Enhanced audio return channels. But how did we get here? Well, back in the day, they used to use a technology called BNC connectors, where you separated your red, blue, green, of course, the black and the white. Then we moved over to composite video, which was mind blowing because now, instead of having five cables and audio cable, we now have three cables, one for your picture and two of them for your audio. But when HDMI came out, this allows to have one cable that supported digital video and audio through one single cable. That was a game changer. Let's dive a little bit deeper into this. So if you have only art capabilities, you can do a two-way communication with your television and another device, and that could be a gaming console. The problem is, is that if you use an HDMI 1.4 cable, you only can get 4K at 30 frames per second, but if you have 1080p, you're just fine. So when 4K came out, then we need more resolution. So if you notice, all 4K TVs start at 60 Hertz and the HDMI 2.1 will support 4K at 60 Hertz. But the thing about that is that the audio capabilities is compressed. So if you have an audio system that's connected there and it has surround sound, you can get up to 7.1 with HDMI ARC, but you're not gonna be able to get the full uncompressed sound. And this is where HDMI 2.1 is the new standard. And the reason for it is that HDMI 2.1 supports uncompressed audio. So you can get the full dynamic range of your audio system. Now, if you have a sound bar, you're still limited to the capabilities of the audio system. But if you have a full audio receiver or anything like that, you're gonna get the full maximum sound. Another thing that it will do is it will support up to 4K at 120 Hertz. That's a game changer as well, because now if you have a new PS5 or Xbox or even a computer that supports it, now you are not limited to the 60 frames per second. And that's a huge increase. There's a lot of misleading things out there or people just not educated of what I mean by this. A lot of times when you buy a 60 Hertz television, you might see eARC on the back of it. What that means is that it will support HDMI 2.1, but this HDMI 2.1 is strictly for audio. So yes, you can get that uncompressed sound by going into the menu and turning everything up to the full maximum capabilities of it. But when it comes to video, it's still limited to 60 Hertz. If you have an HDMI 1.4 cable, it will not support HDR. At 4K resolution, you're looking at 24 frames per second and 4K UHD up to 30 frames per second. Now it uses compressed audio, so it will support Dolby Digital and DTS, and it has eight channels of sound. Keep in mind, this cable only supports 10.2 gigabytes per second. Now switching over to HDMI 2.0, now you have HDR support, plus it can support 4K up to 60 frames per second and HD up to 240 frames per second. Another thing it supports is BT 2020 and Rec 709 color space, and you still have compressed audio for 5.1 and 7.1. You also jump up to 32 audio channels and 18 gigabits per second. Now for HDMI 2.1, it supports everything that we need. I'm talking about dynamic HDR, 8K up to 60 frames per second and 4K down to 120 frames per second. And you can do your HD as well. It also is gonna support your variable refresh rates, auto low latency, and we're talking about uncompressed 5.1 and 7.1 audio. And this includes Dolby Atmos and DTS-X. HDMI 2.1 also supports 32 channels and 48 gigabits per second. So now let's take a look at some setups and how these TVs work. So I have a Vizio soundbar and this one supports Dolby Atmos surround. So total of 7.1 channels, which is pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is over here, we're gonna take the eARC input and then we're gonna 
go ahead and plug it to the back of this Samsung QN90B. You can see right there, it is the ultra high speed cable. Then this is gonna deliver the full benefits of a soundbar. The first thing you notice is with it plugged in, it labels the soundbar and you can see that it will show the volume going up and down. But to maximize this, we wanna go over here on the Samsung into the settings. In the settings, you can see the sound output and I can click on it and go over to optical, back to TV speakers. And as you can see, it is labeled the Vizio. Now we're looking at the sound menu inside of the Samsung. Let's take a closer look. Well, you can see right here, it is labeled the sound output being the Vizio once again. But what we wanna do is go into expert settings. And down here, you can see HDMI eARC mode. So what you wanna do is go ahead and toggle it over to automatic. So any content that the TV sees will automatically go over to the HDMI cable. Now you can go in here and play with these other settings, but I would also make sure that Dolby Atmos is turned on so when it sees that, and pretty much that's it. Now, being that this TV is a Samsung Q90B, it also has simultaneous optical output. Another part of this is that you have to choose content that has Dolby Atmos output. So here on Prime Video, you can see this particular one that says role play that is labeled Dolby Atmos right here. Next, let's go take a look at a Sony television. So the Sony TV we're gonna be using is this one right here. This is the X95L connected to the HTA 7000 soundbar. Since this is a Google TV, all you wanna do is hit that gear at the top and you're gonna get some options over here. You see where it says display and sounds, so gonna press on that. And then you wanna go down to where it says audio output. Under audio output, go down to the bottom and make sure the eARC mode is turned on as well as your pass-through mode. So keep everything automatic if you don't understand, but this is how you're gonna set up a Google-powered Sony television. And last, we're gonna take a look at an LG TV. First of all, if you hit the gear on the remote control, you get the sidebar. So again, you wanna hit the little gear at the top to get into the menu system. You wanna press on sound, and you can see that it is connected to a sound bar. Now, to get access to the settings, make sure that the HDMI is set up to ARC devices and you wanna to go to advanced settings. Inside of here, you can see that the Adobe Atmos is grayed out is because this soundbar will automatically activate. Now, at the bottom here, we have a few last things and that's where you have digital sound output. But again, make sure that eARC is supported, is turned on. So as you can see, if you wanna get the best audio and video experience, just go ahead and buy HDMI 2.1 cables because Later on in the future, if you upgrade to a 120 hertz TV, you already have the cable that's gonna connect everything right off the bat. Now, just a side note here, the Xbox Series X and the PS5 both comes with a high-speed cable, so you don't have to buy one, but if you have a older cable, please, 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 unhook that cable and put in the cable that comes with the box to get the best video and audio experience. I'm Tech Steve, thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.